Last time on Total Drama The Top 100, most teams were adjusting well to their new members. Even Alejandro was willing to team up with Noah. In the challenge, teams were tasked with electing their strongest member to go through Chef's boot camp. Sammy bit off more than she could chew, Tyler was tired, Mickey probably shouldn't be here, Dave is still germaphobic, Brick fell apart in a challenge he should have excelled in, and finally Sky upset Axel so much that Axel pushed Sky off the tree, meaning flaming cockroaches and ravenous spiders had to go to elimination. Despite Bridget thinking the plan was secure to vote Ripper off, Scarlet and Bowie had hatched a plan to get rid of Mike. Sky thought she had the vote secured with Joe, Topher, and Lightning making a tie, and the fact she got an idol from Dave. But it turned out that the idol was a fake, and Junior had a real one he used on Scott, eliminating her from the competition. Bowie goes to Bridget in the mess hall, and he tells her good morning. She says that honestly, she can't believe that Mike is gone. He was weird, but he was genuine. Bowie says that he knows, out of everyone he wanted gone, Mike was near the bottom. Bridget says that it makes no sense though, she's been thinking about it time and time again. Someone had to have flipped on the team. I mean, she saw Ripper's expression. He was entirely shocked. Sander says that she needs to stop overthinking things. He's gone. They need to focus on the now. Bridget says that she's right, but if they don't reflect on people that may be playing the game, they will be blindsided. Scarlet is writing in a book and Ripper asks what she's writing. Scarlet says that she's honestly shocked he didn't call her a nerd and Ripper says, Oh right, you're a nerd. Don't get so comfortable being a nerd around him. Ripper in confessional says that Sanders had to have put some kind of chip in his head. He's happier than ever and he just wants to try new things. He can't stand this. Ripper walks over to his group of Chet, Rock, B, and Dave. Dave doesn't want to be involved but is being dragged into it. Ripper says that he doesn't get it. He's being all nice to people now. Chet says that's not like him and Ripper says that he knows that. Dave says that it must be from being around Sanders so much. It must be rubbing off on him. Rock says that it's just like a good beat. It moves you to your soul. Ripper says that he doesn't know what to do and Dave says that some change is good. Dave in confessional says that he is happy Sky is gone. He grew while Sky never did. He just wishes that he hadn't given her a fake idol. Damien is talking to Mary about an alliance. Mary says that the best course of action will be to get Harold and Sierra. Dwayne asks if he can speak to Damien and Damien says that he's busy. Dwayne says that he's been busy for a week. They need to talk now. Damien says that they can talk later. Dwayne needs to respect his decisions more. Dwayne says that he understands and leaves and Mary says that Damien really needs to talk this out and Damien says that nobody needs to tell him what to do before leaving. Sierra asks Dawn if she can read Cody's mind to see what Cody wants for his birthday, and Dawn says that she doesn't have telepathy. Ella says that she should just give him what she can. Sierra says that she is so right and thanks Dawn and Ella. Cody asks Harold how he can get more fans on the fan sites. Sierra's been kinda pissed reading hate comments. He just wants to make it clear he loves her. Harold says that it's not exactly any new news. She was creepy about her love for him, and Cody says that that's true, but she mellowed out now. If only they could see this side of her that's not in the game. Lori goes to Dwayne and says that he deserves to feel her. She notices how distraught Dwayne is and asks what's wrong. Dwayne says that he just thought him and Damien were close, but it's like Damien doesn't want anything to do with him. Lori says that honestly, he's a good father figure. Damien doesn't appreciate it as much as he should. I mean, I would have loved to have a father like you. Even if you're a bit insensitive at times and overall dorky, you're well-meaning in the end. I mean, I just hurt people because I'm angry with my own failures. Dwayne says that he wasn't expecting something like that from her, and Lori says that she can be profound when she wants to be. She's on his side in the end. Damien is angry and Damien says that he can't believe Dwayne wants his attention 24-7. He has a life also. He says this while thinking he's alone, but Anwi says that he needs to be more true to himself. Damien says that he is true to his feelings, and Anwi just stares at him, and Damien says, well, mostly. I mean, I like Dwayne, but I can't be his babysitter. Anwi simply tells him to stop lying, and Damien sighs. In confessional, Damien says that he knows he's lying to himself, but what if Dwayne leaves? He doesn't think he could handle his second father leaving, at least this way. He can say goodbye in his own way. Carrie and Devin go to Heather, and Carrie says that they need her help. Heather asks if they know who she is, and Carrie tells her that they know, they just need her more than they don't. Heather says that's fair, what do they need? Devin says that Axel needs to go. That poor boy Mickey is being put through hell with Axel. Heather says it's not really her problem, and Devin says that she is an idol. 
and Heather says that after last night, they can't trust any idol they find. Amy asks Sadie if she has anything else to do, and Sadie asks if she should leave, and Amy says that she can stay, but she better be quiet around her, she's trying to nap until the next challenge. Sadie says that she doesn't understand why Amy's so abrasive, and Amy asks what she just said, and Sadie says that she said to be quiet, and Amy says that's right. If she's lucky, she will make sure Sadie stays longer. Amy in confessional says that keeping Sadie around is a guaranteed ally. It's a long-term investment, nothing else. Emma asked Beth if she ever felt lovesick, and Beth said she felt it all the time until she learned to be happy single. Emma says that she had it under control when she could watch Chase from his side of the island, but ever since Chase moved to the other team, he's too far to see, and she's missing him. Spud says that maybe she should get into meditation, and Emma says that she's been trying, but all she can think about is Chase. Beth says that that's the issue. You're not supposed to think when you're meditating. Axel is having Mickey carry a giant wooden crate, and Axel says that he needs to grow his glutes. This will be good training. Scott goes to Junior and says that he's not really used to saying this, but like, thanks for helping last night. Junior says of course, he views him as a brother, and Scott ruffles his hair a bit and says he's a good kid. When walking away, Joe asks what that was about, and Scott says it was nothing. Lightning and Topher come over, and Topher says that the Total Drama fansite would love to see that, and Lightning asks why he couldn't be that nice in his season. Scott says that he treated Lightning like royalty compared to others. Joe says that's the truth. Topher says how about this, they will team up with him and they will promise to keep Junior safe. Scott says that he's keeping him safe enough, and Joe says right, Blainley and Jen are perfect candidates to protect Junior. Scott says that if they touch Junior, he will. Lightning asks what he will possibly do against him. There's no way he will put Junior's safety before his own, and Scott says that's right, do whatever. He doesn't care. He leaves, and in confessional, Joe says that he definitely cares about Junior. Jen asks Blainley how it went, and Blainley says that it went swimmingly. Scott stayed true to the Alliance. Plan A is to keep winning, but Plan B is to vote out Lightning. Joe can be worked with. Lightning, though, is so far up his own rear, he loops back around to being himself. Chase asks Priya if he can talk to her, and Priya says that if it's about social media or Emma, she's not interested. Chase says that he's been thinking. He kind of wants to be like her. Priya asks what he means, and Chase says that she's so strong and smart and loved by so many, he wants to be like that. Priya says that she's been waiting for this. She's created a training course and plan for any of her cast that ask her for help. Chase says that's great. Chase in confessional says that winning the season would be great to boost his sub count, and then Emma would love him when he's rich. Lorenzo asks Taylor if she wants to join in on the team's caverns and creatures game, and Taylor says that game's for nerds and loveless losers. Lorenzo says that's not true, he loves the game. Taylor says that's no surprise. Lorenzo says fine. Tom was making custom outfits for everyone, but that's fine. Taylor asks if she can design her own outfit, and Lorenzo says that Tom likes fulfilling everyone's vision for it. Taylor says in confessional that letting her team all be in crappy designed costumes would be a crime. She needs to show off some style, and hey, maybe it'll rub off onto the others. Leonard says that a troll is blocking the path towards the gold. They must defeat him to obtain it. Z asks how big he is, and Gwen says that he's around 8 foot probably, and Z says that they can't assume that he could be an abnormally small one. Leonard says that on a second look he was supposed to be invisible, my mistake. Gwen says that she cast Guiding Light to show anything that was made invisible, and Ezekiel says that Gwen is pretty smart. He will take care of the troll with Z, and Z says that he likes the look of the troll though, he wants to recruit him. Leonard says that he doesn't have someone to play a troll though, and then Taylor arrives and Leonard says the troll has arrived. Caleb tells Zoe that he's sorry his boyfriend is gone, and Zoe says she just doesn't understand it. It's like everyone has a grudge against him. He didn't choose to have multiple personality disorder. That's probably why they got rid of him. Caleb says that they can't assume that's the reason, and Duncan comes over and says with all due respect, they're gonna be targeted. Zoe asks why, and Duncan says that they're all finalists. That's the real reason why he was targeted. He was a strong contestant, even with his quirks. Caleb says that he's actually smart, and Duncan says thanks. He turned his life around after All-Stars and got a degree in psychology, but that's not the point. The finalist needs to stick together. Julia goes to Eva and tells her that she needs to be in an alliance with someone as strong as her. Eva says that she doesn't like her, and Julia says that's rude before leaving. 
MacArthur tells Julia she will team up with her, and Julia says no thanks. MacArthur asks why not, is it because she hasn't shown how strong she is? Julia says that she's too loud, and MacArthur says that she could be quiet, she promises, plus she is good at finding information, like how she recently found out that Caleb, Duncan, and Zoe are trying to team up. Julia asks why, and Crimson appears out of nowhere and says that those three are finalists. Julia is shocked and says a finalist alliance and they didn't get me? Oh, it's so on. Katie asks Jay what his plans are for the future and Jay says that his only plan is to not die. Katie says not this silly. What about outside of here? Jay says that his only plan is to not die. And Katie says, well, I'll do my best to keep you going and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. Jane Confessional says that Katie is very pretty, but he doesn't understand why she wants to spend so much time around him. Is she playing him or what? Sam is gaming and Eva asks if they really kept him around so he could keep gaming, and Sam says he was surprised as well, but that was your guys' call, not his. Jack goes to Alejandro and says that he knows how much he hates Millie, but they should work on taking over the team. If they get rid of Jeff, then he can take the leadership role from him. Noah is listening and he brings Jeff over and Jeff listens to Jock saying that they can dispose of Jeff at the next vote. Alejandro says that he has Noah under his thumb. He actually thinks that he will team up with him, and Millie will do whatever he says. Jeff has heard enough and he asks what this is about, and Alejandro says it's not what it looks like, and Jeff says that he knows what this is. He welcomes him onto his team and they want him gone. What has he done to deserve this? Jock tells him to calm down and Jeff tells him to knock it off. He tries to be a good team leader and this is how they repay him? They better watch their backs. Jeff leaves and Alejandro says he doesn't understand how this happened and Jock says that someone must have clued him in. Noah tells Elodie that he wants to team up with her to get rid of Alejandro and if she doesn't, Jeff will be eliminated. Elodie says that she likes Jeff, she will definitely help. Anne Maria asks Sammy for some reiteration on what Sammy said last week. She was thinking about it and did she say that Amy had sprayed it on her hair? Sammy says yeah, and Ambria says that she takes back what she said about Amy. She will make her pay for ruining the thing that makes girls so pretty. Kelly asks Nichelle how long she's been in the business, and Nichelle says she's a new girl on the block, and Kelly says she wishes she could be Nichelle's age. So much opportunity. Nichelle says that there could be a lot of roles for her as well, and Kelly asks if she really means it. Nichelle says that Kelly is looking nice. She will get her at least a minor role in her next movie, she promises. Rhody, Wayne, and Brick are trying to hit an apple onto an arrow and are failing. Brick says that this is impossible, and Brody says that they can't give up, and Wayne agrees, saying that a snow owl never quits. Scary Girl shows up and asks if she can try, and Wayne says that she should go for it. Scary Girl is able to do it on the first try and she bows as Brody says that was sweet. Brick says that Scary Girl has hidden talents, they made the right call bringing her here. Justin asks Dakota how the teams are going, and Dakota says that they don't expect a thing. She will make sure the girls team falls as long as he can make sure she remains. Emma tells Kitty that something feels off. Miles asks what she means, and Ryan says the only thing off is that Scary Girl is still here. Emma says that it's just a familiar feeling, like this gender war is just a fight to make sure someone else benefits. Miles says that she actually felt something similar, and Ryan asks if this means they can't get rid of Scary Girl, and Kitty says no, they will definitely do that, but they need to keep their eyes and ears way more open. Pete and Jerry tell the team to listen up. They will be the team leaders, as they have the most wisdom. Izzy is the assistant. Izzy says that she has 30 different personalities, all ranging from 16 years old and 957. Sean says that he's not really sure they need this, and Pete says rule number one, don't question the overall useless usage of us leaders. DJ asks if anything truly changes, and Jerry says, well, no, but we're the leaders, so don't forget. Tyler says that he will take all their lessons to heart, and Lindsay asks what makes these old guys so special. Stephanie says she would rather die than listen to them. Trent says it's probably better to just listen even if they don't like it. Rodney says that he's okay with them being leaders as long as he can go see Mary from time to time, and Jerry says that as long as he keeps winning, he can see her as much as he wants. Chris welcomes everyone to the next challenge. Of course, this challenge is based off the Extreme Torture Challenge. For round one, all the teams will elect one person to skydive, and the rest of you will haul a couch that they must land on. First three teams to land on it get immunity. Scarlet says that she will do this. With all the respect, she's the only one that really could calculate trajectory fast enough to make this work. Sierra says that she has always wanted to do this. She saw Trent break all his bones and she knew she had to do this. Axel says Mickey can do this and Heather says that enough is enough. They need to stop her DIY project before it hurts their progress. Axel says that she already said how it's gonna be and Heather says whatever. Lightning says that this is a job for show lightning. 
Chase says that this is definitely worthy of his skills. MacArthur says she's always wanted to skydive, she will do this. Sammy asks Jeff if he's gonna ask who's fit for this, and Jeff asks why he should. Everyone will hate him for it. Noah says fine, he will do it. In confessional, Noah says he won't jump. He just didn't want this to last any longer. Ryan says he will do this to get away from Scary Girl. And finally, Izzy says she will do this. She's always wanted to skydive safely. Try asks her to define this safe. As they all are up in their plane, Chris says that some of the parachutes don't have actual parachutes. Jump at your own risk. Lightning says to get out of the way, he's going. As he's falling, he realizes his parachute is a fake and he falls into the water. Mickey says there's no way he's gonna do this, he's gonna faint. Mickey faints and falls off the plane and Ryan jumps after him saying that he can't let the little dude die. He pulls Mickey's parachute and it turns out to be real. He lets Mickey go before pulling his own and there isn't a parachute in his. Sierra jumps out and gets a teddy bear from her parachute and she says that she will name him Cody Jr. Jr. Chase jumps out and lands after getting a lucky parachute and Izzy jumps out without a parachute for fun. MacArthur says that she's insane and Noah says she doesn't know the half of it. MacArthur asks if he's gonna fight her for a parachute and Noah says he's good. MacArthur takes the rest and jumps out before pulling them all until she gets the last parachute and she scores them a point. Chris tells them that mediocre mealworms, drowning mosquitoes, and excited ants have earned immunity. Time for the next challenge where you will elect one of your members to ride a moose. The two teams to do the best will win their team immunity. Jock says he can definitely do this, Scary Girl says she will try, Rodney says that he has dealt with Moose for years, Topher says that he will show the world the Topher experience, Ripper says that he can definitely do this, Dwayne says he will do this, and Damien says he really doesn't have to, and Dwayne says that he knows he hasn't been pulling his weight. He will make sure Damien can be proud of him. Damien says to knock them dead, and Dwayne says he will make him proud. As the round begins, Dwayne says this is easy before being flung by the moose as well as Topher when he starts gloating, saying that no dumb moose can outsmart THE Topher. Jock is also another loss as he gets overconfident. Rodney tells the moose to calm down, the girls won't like him getting all angry, and the moose calms down enough for Rodney to win. Ripper says that this moose is stupid, he will just let him win. Ripper is then kicked into the pile of dirty socks. Scary Girl shows up and the moose starts running away with her on it. Chris then says that hopping stink bugs and silent crickets are safe. Time for the final round. Chris tells them that it'll be a mud skiing competition where two teams will face off against each other. The two teams to win will get immunity. You must elect a driver and a skier. The skier must collect flags while the driver wants to get the skier to crash. Bowie says that he will be a driver and Bridget says that she will be a skier. Harold says that he almost won last time so he will do this. Damien says that he will drive. Joe says that she will drive. Amaria says she will ski. She will show off her swimsuit as well and overshadow that ironing board named Jen. Alejandro says he will drive then. Flaming cockroaches are against amber scorpions and tenacious earwigs are against ravenous spiders. Scarlet tells Bowie a way to win and Bowie says in confessional that Scarlet is really valuable as an ally. As Harold goes, he's doing really well, able to catch all the flags, but Bowie says it's do or die and he stops the jet ski and Harold hits it head first. Bowie immediately goes again and Harold is caught off guard and lets go of the handle. Bridget goes next and she is able to catch all the flags and can handle anything Damien throws at her. Chris says that the flaming cockroaches are the winners. Amber Scorpions, you are going to elimination. Bowie says in confessional that Bridget actually pulled through for us. Maybe he should target someone else, like B. Anne Maria is about to go, but Joe says that her hair isn't looking right, and Anne Maria says she can't do this if her hair ain't looking perfect, and Alejandro says it's looking fine. Anne Maria says fine isn't good enough, you know. She's cut off by Joe going full throttle, and she falls into the mud. Anne Maria says that she's gonna kill Joe for getting mud in her hair. Jen is next and she says she's only skied a few times but she can't let the team down. Jen actually is a natural. Alejandro knows he has to pull through. He stands up and takes his shirt off but he hits his head on a branch and falls into the mud as Jen skis to the finish. Chris says that ravenous spiders have won and Scott says in confessional that it's a good thing they won. I really didn't know what side to take. I want to do what's in juniors, I mean my best interests. Noah asks Topher if he can borrow his phone until after elimination and Topher says fine but he better not break it. Noah says he will take good care of it. Before elimination, Damien asks if he can talk with Dwayne and Dwayne says he always can. Damien says that he has been distant because he doesn't want to feel the pain of him being voted out eventually. Dwayne says that there's always a good buy, you should just value the time you have. Damien says he knows that now, he will value all the time he has with him. They hug each other. 
Mary tells Anwi, Cody, and Sierra that they need to get Damien on his A-game. Sierra says that voting Dwayne out would be terrible, and Harold says that honestly he agrees. Dwayne doesn't deserve to go. Mary asks who else they could get rid of and everyone goes silent. Alejandro goes to Millie and says that they are voting Jeff out and Millie is crying. Alejandro is asking what's wrong and Millie says that he called her a cow. He's been using her and Eva this entire time. Alejandro asks how she could possibly know or think that and Millie says to stop playing dumb. Noah showed her a phone with the episode on it. She knows he's lying. And Maria comes over and says to come on Millie, we'll go do our nails and unlike Alejandro I actually care about you. Alejandro asks who did this and Noah says that revenge is best served cold, you know. Alejandro says he should have known, but he won't be going home today. Noah asks how and Alejandro says he found an idol. Noah says that it's probably a fake and Alejandro says they'll see about that. At elimination, Chris says that they have all cast their votes, but first, let's show some insight for who you should have voted for. Chef, do the honors for Amber Scorpions. Sierra, you are insane for Cody. Some people may view that as a threat. Damien, you were the driver and you failed. Dwayne, you thought you were going to ace several challenges and you failed every time. You may be too old for this. And Harold, you got beaten in the same challenge again. Thanks, Chef. If you get a marshmallow, you are safe. Dawn, Ella, Damien, Mary, Ennui, Cody, Lori, Sierra, and finally, Harold. Damien says that this can't be, not Dwayne. Dwayne says it's okay, just do your best and he will be there for him in spirit. He will always believe in him, he just needs to believe in himself. Damien says that he can't believe they do this to him and he storms off. Mary tells him to wait but he's already left. Chris says that was a lot of drama, but for now, tenacious earwigs. Chef, any thoughts? Jeff, you shut down today after hearing that they were planning to betray you. Honestly, justified. And Maria, that was a pathetic way to lose. Jock, you are also pathetic. Noah, you betrayed your allies. Noah says allies, making a lot of assumptions here. And Alejandro, you have been talking behind people's backs and some people may not like that. Chris thanks him. Same thing as last time. Anne Maria, Sammy, Kelly, Michelle, Elodie, Millie, Jock, Jeff, and finally, Noah. Alejandro says he won't be going anywhere before trying to grab the idol and then realizing he can't find it and saying he had an idol but he can't find it. He has to believe him. Chris asks Chef if he believes him and Chef says nope. Alejandro storms off angrily saying that someone here stole it from him. This is why he trusts no one. Jock in confessional says he has nothing in this sleeve, but in this one is an idol. Votes for Amber Scorpions are as follows. Sierra voted for Dwayne as he was the only real option. Dawn voted Lori due to disliking her. Ella voted for Harold because he failed the challenge. Dwayne voted Harold for failing the challenge. Damien voted Harold for failing the challenge. Mary voted Dwayne to get Damien's head in the game. Ennui voted Dwayne as he was the weakest link. Cody voted Dwayne as he was the weakest link. Lori voted Harold for failing the challenge. And Harold voted Dwayne as he was the weakest link. Votes for Tenacious Earwigs are as follows. Jeff voted Alejandro for plotting against him. Anne Maria voted Alejandro for badmouthing Millie. Sammy voted Alejandro for being fake. Kelly voted Alejandro for being fake. Nichelle voted Alejandro for being fake. Jack voted Alejandro as he got what he needed from him. Noah voted Alejandro due to disliking him. Elodie voted Alejandro for being fake. Millie voted Alejandro for lying to her. Alejandro voted Noah for exposing him. And that's that for Total Drama The Top 100 Episode 13. What did you think? Question of the week. So much drama and plot lines going on, but what team do you enjoy the most? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama The Top 100.